welcome to today's episode of the podcast. I'm excited as always to be here and I'm really delighted and honoured to share this with you. Today we're exploring this idea of seeking first the kingdom. I feel like we've done this a little bit already. I know we've definitely explored it in the Holy Spirit Love Notes a little bit as well. Uh, But Holy Spirit has been nudging me around this a lot more recently. In particular, this idea that um, we're told we we shouldn't worry. Don't worry about this thing and that thing. Don't worry about what you need. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your food. Don't worry about all the day-to-day stuff. Jesus said instead, seek first the kingdom. There is a whisper that we can very easily hear when we read this. It almost feels like we're being told that we, okay, we're not meant to worry about those things. So does that mean that those things are too small and too inconsequential to God, that we shouldn't worry with those things? And the truth is that is not the case. I don't believe that in telling us to seek first the kingdom, that Jesus is saying, don't talk to me about that stuff. That stuff's not important. What he's saying is this is where you start. So what if instead of thinking that this whole section about not worrying, what if it's not about saying all of these things that you need, don't talk to God about it. What if instead, if seek first the kingdom is actually, do you know what, step into life with me, step into conversation with me, and then let's explore all these things that you need. What if that was what that was really about? And what what might that look like in the reality of day to day life? That's what I would where we're going to start with this conversation today, and we're going to see where Holy Spirit leads from there. But one of the things, the reminder that keeps coming up, and I did try and quickly find the Bible verse before we got started. I failed to do so quite candidly because I was rushing. Uh, <laughs> I had um, a delightful opportunity this morning at the time of recording to meet a new friend in town for coffee and it was wonderful and we were chatting about so many things and I looked at the time and oh my word it's half past 11 I need to get cracking Uh, and so I haven't found the bible verse yet but there is a verse where John John the Baptist John uh, says something along the lines of um, the kingdom of heaven is near now you might remember that the kingdom of God kingdom of heaven those phrases are used interchangeably depending upon which gospel you're reading Matthew in particular if I remember correctly tends to talk about kingdom of heaven uh, and so it was a it was a, a Jewish view of things uh, where the, whereas kingdom of God was um, looked from a from from Luke as a Gentile uh, he he would use that sort of language or it might be the other way around but they can be used interchangeably and so one of the thoughts that keeps popping in my mind is actually what if the kingdom what if the kingdom of God because if John said kingdom of God is is near as Jesus was approaching him and so actually what if if we're looking to know what it means to seek first the kingdom what does that really mean what if it's about seeking first Jesus relationship conversation Uh, and so that was where my mind was going with this, some of this stuff. And it reminded me, actually, my my maternal grandmother, uh, in the in the in her one of it wasn't her dying words, but in the days leading up to her death. So she um, the August before she died in the December, she in the August of the year that she died. And I don't know why we're going here, but we are in the August of the year that she died. She was finally admitted to a hospital for a, um, an operation, which they told her would be uh, a little bit potentially risky because she left it quite late in the in in her life to get this operation done uh and it was successful enough but she never really got better from there uh and humanly speaking she was at her absolute lowest point riddled with infection uh really struggling with day-to-day life um really low if you like but actually from a from a heavenly perspective she was at her most glorious she was the most christ-like i ever knew her and Myself and one of my sisters, Philippa, who I know some of you here live with me know because you've met her via this podcast. Philippa and I, one evening when we were visiting her, uh, she was lying in her hospital bed and she was looking up and some of the things that she was saying and she was singing, it was like she was singing with heaven. It was amazing. Uh, And then she said to us, no matter what else you do, remember, live every day with Jesus. Now, like I say, it wasn't her dying words. She then... It, was, it felt like the final goodbye in that moment and uh, so much so that we went back and, and my mum rang up my auntie, her other daughter, uh, who lived far away and said, you need to come, I think this is it. Uh, she then did rally and she, she kept going for, for a little while afterwards. Um, but it was, in my mind, they were, her, they were her final words. It was the, the pinnacle of, of her becoming most Jesus like she could. And she left us with that reminder, whatever else you do, live every day with Jesus. And I forgot 
I misquoted her initially because um, I felt nudged to share some of this story at her funeral. Uh, and I was talking to Philippa about it. And I said, remind me exactly what Nanny said. Live every day for Jesus. No, says Philippa. She said, live every day with Jesus. And there's a massive distinction there. Because we, in, in the Christian circles, uh, depending on what kind of church environment you might go to, we have this sense of duty, all these things that we need to do for God. Uh, and like a list of stuff. And actually the reminder was, no, this is not about doing things for God. This is doing things with God. And it ties into this reminder, seeking first the kingdom, seeking first Jesus, going to him with those conversations. And what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? Because God knows all the other stuff that we need as well. We can't walk around. We definitely explore this before because what I'm about to say, I can hear myself saying it. We're not able to walk around naked. Oh, I wouldn't want to. It's very cold and windy here. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, and if we didn't eat, ultimately we would die. So God knows that you need those things. But the nudge that I had and the reminder was that ultimately all of it is about doing it first with Jesus. Father, Son and Holy Spirit stepping into that relationship with God. And he's been working on me with this stuff more and more and unpacking it more and more and really nudging me to share that with you. Even though I know for some of you who are following along, this is not news to you. There will be people who hear this go, yeah, I know, well, we've talked about this before. Or, I've heard this before. This is not new. There will be somebody, though, for whom this is either a reminder or it's a confirmation or it's a nudge. Because the real the real peace, my real heart for what we're doing at Yuya, yes, it's about equipping you to be you. But the I-E-R is vital, that intentional, expectant relationship piece. And so unpacking what that relationship looks like. You know, a human relationship is about conversation. What do you think about this? What should we do about that? Oh, what's your heart for this? What's your heart for that? Conversation. And our relationship with God should be no different. And yes, I know I just said should. And yes, I know I usually don't like shoulds. Uh, but take this as a, as a, a good one, a good should. Well, that's hard to say. <laughs> but really, that it's about expecting to hear from God because God loves you and he's been loving on you since before you were ever, ever born. And so the reminder again, it's not about not talking to God about all of those things. It's about going, okay, let's do this. This is my, my how I step into this day is with you. Now, show me your heart. Show me what these things look like from your perspective. And that actually shifts things in a, in a really big way. And as I've reminded you as well, I've said this multiple times and I'm going to say it again because some people are hearing these podcast episodes for the first time. I don't want you doing this on your own. Yes, there's you. Yes, there's God. But there should be a third person or persons in this and that's community. You know, Adam needed Eve. Even though Adam had God walking with him in the cool of the day, he needed a companion and we can have companion or companions. Uh, and that's what the Itchy Soul Playground is really like. It's about giving you that safe space so you can walk this out, you know, get more and more deliberate. And if you're not sure who you are, how God made you to be, or if you need encouragement to keep on being who he made you to be, because sometimes not everybody around us likes us being us. Sometimes we're too much or to this or to that, or, you know, because people are different to us. We, we, I'm here to encourage you to embrace those differences because actually if you meet somebody who's different to you, you can complement each other when you really learn and understand each other and, and go and recognize those challenges and go, okay, so how do we make this work? This actually came up in conversation with a lady I met this morning. Uh, you meet people who are, who are very different to you and it can bump up against stuff. Okay, let's recognize that. The enemy would love nothing more than to create division and have you focus on all the ways that you don't get along or all the ways that you, things you don't have in common uh, and the way that that person doesn't do things the way that you do them and vice versa. But we're all on the same side, you know, we're all on the side of love. We're all here wanting to, to step forward and represent God to this world that needs it. So how do we do that? We do that by, okay, show me, the, show me this person from your perspective. Show me how we embrace the differences and make this work. Uh, but it all starts by seeking first Jesus, seeking first the kingdom, aligning our hearts and going, okay, you have my heart, God, show me what this looks like. That's the reminder today. Your plaything, if you want one, if you've, if you've never, ever had a conversation with God before, uh, you know, I would encourage you, pull out your pen, ask him a question, listen for the answer. Intentional, expectant relationship. He's talking to you all the time. He wants to, he wants to hear from you and he wants you to hear from him as well. So try it out. And of course, if you'd like some support, if you don't have community, uia.com forward slash join is where you can find out more about the playground and join us. I shall see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.